what we do is uh, read one of the amendments, the Bill of Rights, uh, weekly, so we know. And this is one that uh, applied, applies uh, currently in the news. Uh, and it's uh, Article 8 is excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. What page is that? That's page 51. There you go. So Eighth Amendment, uh, yeah, most famously a cruel and unusual punishment, uh, obviously ties in with a lot of uh, the, the controversy regarding uh, torture and so on and so forth. Mark, would you like to give us an update on the national and state report as far as what uh, we sure. the people's up to? Sure. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to mention the state uh, site, which is givemeliberty.org slash New York. And most of you have probably been on here. Uh, this is where you go to actually join the uh, uh, We the People. And there's a whole new look. And if you've been on the, uh, the White House um, site, you'll notice a, an amazing similarity in the uh, look. Uh, this is the new We the People. And New York is already starting to be populated, I think, because of the fact that we've you know, gotten such good uh, legs under us here. <clears throat> so there are some good things uh, happening with the, uh, the website. Um, one of the things, there was no uh, WebEx this week. So I created my own at about uh, 5 30, 6 o'clock with Bob and caught him in Chicago being dropped off at O'Hare to come back here and he was being ushered by uh, uh, the Illinois State Coordinator who wants all of our best practices, wants this video clip, wants uh, the agenda, the action items, all the uh, things that we've done to uh, kind of fashion their meetings around us. Uh, so, so, you know, we're starting to get a lot of notoriety and, and people are, uh, you know, realizing that structure is, is good. Um, so the one thing I will mention on the state update is that for county coordinators, which would include Skip, and Kevin and uh, Daryl and some of the other uh, coordinators who have been here. We're going to have our first uh, conference call. Uh, going to try to keep it to about a half an hour on this Wednesday at 7.30. And hopefully we'll get as many uh, of that 10, 11 coordinators as possible to, uh, to join in and start to build some uh, continuity. Um, the last thing I'll mention <coughs> has to do with cap and trade. And Kevin was... Uh, well, I think a little bit taken back when he sent out under the Liberty Council idea a We the People memo to uh, let everybody know what was brewing with the, uh, the rally up at Congressman Murphy's location, his office. And Bob uh, Schultz is on our mailing list, so therefore he got it, and he immediately reacted with a comment of, is this political? You and I may have construed it as, looks political, okay? But when I talked to him tonight, I, I said to him that I had looked over the state coordinator outline, and everything that we've been doing is on here. Uh, you know, reaching out to other people, networking with other activists and other organizations and so forth. And the thing that kind of jumped out, on, you know, in my mind was write letters to officials, march and protest, um, yeah. I feel right at home. Um, you know, radio interviews, all these, all these out, uh, outsourcing or outpouring of things. And my question was, what is the problem with us putting out a message regarding the cap and trade uh, demonstration? And here's what he said. So I think this is good that we can be very clear. He said, you know, we the people is not about political issues. Okay. Now, what makes a political issue? And what he said was government action that doesn't violate the Constitution. His example was a state constitution authorizes a sales tax. Right. Therefore, it is constitutional under New York State. A civic matter is, are we going to make it 4% or 5%? So my question to him was, you know, what about cap and trade? Does it violate the con you know the federal constitution? To which he said, "I don't know." Right. That's why I suggested you guys go lightly. 
So, so I told them it's likely to be added as a potential topic tonight as to how does a group like ours do all the legwork to determine if indeed it is a constitutional issue or not. And that puts a lot of strain on us reacting quickly because you have to do all this research first, which uh, I think what he's, in my mind, what he's uh, told us is this is the kind of due diligence he does on everything he you know, has been about. And um, so he, he did say that if we find in the actual bill, the 1,200 pages that nobody read, that there is a constitutional, you know, the enumerated powers idea, Hello. that there is a earmark as to this is what part of the Constitution we are doing this uh, cap-and-trade bill on, then he would like to know what it is. And his comment was, if it's under general welfare clause, it's probably something that we can sink our teeth into in question. Sure. So, for well, what it's worth. Well, the intention of uh, there's only 20 enumerated powers given the federal government and the Constitution, I think there's cause for concern. Uh, with that said, we should proceed cautiously. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it's, it's a 501c4 nonpartisan organization. Yeah. I'm sorry, we're brand new. What is this cap and trade thing? Can uh, you, really, we'll, really short thing? Really short? Just so I have It's some. a bill that, that was passed through uh, the House of Representatives on Friday evening without it being fully published. New York State or? Federal. Uh, a lot of this you can refer to if you, this topics of the week, and I, I send that out by email also. Okay. And what I did is added uh, live links on that. <laughs> Just hang on one second. Okay. What I do want to do, as uh, Patrick Z is here, and he actually organized the activism outside of Murphy's office. He wants to make a quick announcement. We'll do that, and then we'll move on, and we can cover more cap and trade and topic of the week. But I, I know you have to go somewhere, and then I'm going to burn through these action items. Yeah, I'll say to those, but thank you. I, I just want to let everyone know. First of all, today was fantastic. We actually uh, started off with four people in a light drizzle, got a little concerned, and we said uh, we knew it was last minute, but we said, all right, we made up the signs anyway. We're already here. What the heck? So we got out to the corner there next to uh, Murphy's office, and actually people just started mingling mingling up and uh, actually joining us, people that had no idea what we're doing, and said, geez, cap and trade, yeah, that's abysmal, give me a sign. And uh, <laughs> another guy actually met us walking out to Murphy's office at the end, and he said, I saw the sign, he says, you guys here for cap and trade? And we said, yeah, we're going to Murphy's office. He said, can I come? So we actually filled Murphy's office with about 15 people, and, and 15 people actually fills that little office pretty well. There was a big... Uh question that was being uh, uh, carried out, uh, especially by the Tea Party Patriots, those who actually uh, organized the, uh, both the April 15th and the uh, June 16th March on Albany Tea Parties. And the big question was, what should we do next? So uh, that inspired uh, a few of us to actually set up a meeting uh, last Wednesday where um, basically we brought together a lot of the uh, local uh, liberty groups, including uh, Weedy People, Campaign for Liberty, the Tea Party Patriots, the Huck Pack, uh, uh, the Glenn Beck Group, and uh, John Birch Society. And basically it was a, a packed room, it was about 60 people or so that showed up, and uh, I presented a, a few ideas based on the experiences that uh, we've had in the past two years in terms of what we could do as a grassroots um, political action, and it gave a lot of, uh, a lot of different uh, concepts and ideas and goals and, and paths. So the end result is that you know, there's a lot of uh, things that, can, that we can do as a complete freedom movement that we could work together and actually accomplish more uh, than just working alone. So the concept of a Liberty Council was brought up. Uh, there's a Yahoo group that was created for people to sign up. And with it, it basically allows a communication network so that between all these various groups, if something important comes up, such as the local uh, uh, protest against Murphy, for instance, or local law A, or, or so forth, then we could quickly send this information to all delivery groups, and those who can make it uh, will have the opportunity to know about it. In addition, it, it provides a forum for us to collaborate on much bigger uh, projects that any one group can do on its own.